Hi friends, it's Auntie Cuckoo. Today's the mystery box challenge and we are making wall decor. Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are doing some decor crafting using items from our mystery box. I'm part of the mystery box challenge this round and Courtney puts it all together. She's creative on the cheap. We've become friends and I'm so grateful she includes me. It really gets your creative juices going. So this is how it goes. You send a box, you get a box. Courtney puts it all together. She's the mastermind. And today I got my box from Jennifer, who is a little bit of calm and crazy. She's also a really sweet and classy lady who puts out DIY and decor related Dollar Tree content. You're going to want to make sure that you check her out. And I sent my box to Jay, who is Jay Money DIY. If you don't know her, I'm surprised. Have you been living under a rock? Jay's wonderful. She's also a mommy of two little people. So be sure to go over and check out all her content. She is super creative, been crafting for years, and I'm sure you're well familiar with both of these wonderful ladies. This time around, the mystery box was in Anything Goes, so you can shop anywhere you want from craft stores like Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, to Dollar Tree, Dollar General, regular stores like Walmart. Now, full transparency, I have pneumonia, and so I'm doing this a little bit out of order. I did open the box and I filmed the audio. However, I was pretty much filling on my deathbed. So let me show you what Jennifer sent me. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, I'm already seeing some things I really like. So a little note from Jennifer. Oh, that's cute. Val, I hope this box is fun and inspiring for you. You are a joy to watch, and maybe one day we'll get to do an in-person shop with me. I can't wait to see what you do with the items in the box from Jennifer. So lots of wood items. I am loving that. So we've got the rings. I love these from Dollar Tree. It is a six count. I've also got, oh, these are adorable. Mini flower pots in wood. How sweet are those? Love this, the wooden beads. I don't think I've seen this in my Dollar Tree and it is by Crafter Square. So nice. Next, I've got some wooden gift tags. So it looks like there are 10 of them. Looks like I've also got a metal tray to work with. This looks like it is from the Dollar Tree. Has the little handles on the side. Love these. And speaking of metal, I have got a truck. You guys know my love for the truck. So we've got a galvanized truck. I think this one is also a Dollar Tree item. Next up, I've got a cutting board, a mini. These are so cute. These are from Hobby Lobby. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm loving this box. You were so kind. And then I've got some wood slices, also a new crafter square item. Love that. And then some wood coasters. I am absolutely obsessed with coasters, so thank you so much. And it looks like it's from Hobby Lobby. It comes with a little holder. I'm excited for this. I've also got some dowels from Crafters Square and then a nice heavy duty wood piece to work with. And now for the challenge items, you know we have to use these. All the other things are great and I can work them into each DIY, but I don't have to use them. These I've got to use, so let's start with challenge item number one. I just feel bad opening this. This is the cutest little birdie paper. Oh, Jennifer, you are so nice. Greenery. I actually love these green picks from the Dollar Tree. It is a five count of fern picks. Thank you so much. And challenge item number two. It's got a little start up here. Okay. Actually, I have been thinking about these. I haven't seen them in my Dollar Tree. Oh, I wish I didn't have to change it. I just keep it on my bedside table, but it is a desk lamp. So we are going to have to work this into one of our DIYs. I've actually heard 
wonderful things about these. So we'll see what I can come up with. Now, the thing that I love the most about the mystery box challenge is that you get to see a wide variety of people's craft techniques. You get to see different things being used in different ways. And there's always a twist. And this time around, Courtney made sure that the twist was an interesting one. So we had three options. So from those options, my twist was you must work three elements into one DIY using wood, metal, and plastic. Since that's my twist, let's jump right into project number one and knock it out. We're going to be using Hot Wheel tracks from the Dollar Tree. You're only going to need one and the little metal tray that Jennifer sent me. Now I took them outside, gave them a spray paint of some flat black spray paint. And then I grabbed some hooks that I had on hand from the Dollar Tree and I took one of those spray painted it as well. Now we're back inside and someone in my last DIY had mentioned just dropping your wooden beads straight into stain instead of individually staining them. Wow, I gave that a try. That was a lot more time efficient and thanks for the tip. So I went ahead and did that with the beads that Jennifer gave me and I did decide to stain all of them since we're going to be using more beads in the next DIY. We're actually only using one for this DIY. And then I took one of the wooden coasters, also stained it, and then one of the wooden rings and gave that some stain as well. Now, while those were drying, I went ahead and brought in the Hot Wheel track and the metal tray. I threaded it through one side of the metal container and along the bottom and up through the top. And that's all there was to it. I was so excited. I had been wanting to make something like this for a while. Now, I also took our dried coaster and our dried hook from the Dollar Tree and I just manually screwed that in. Now, I did learn a thing or two. Like, I really could have used two of those coasters together because uh, the screws were a little bit too deep. But I just fixed that using a couple of popsicle sticks that I cut down and hot glued first side by side. And then those were not deep enough. So then I went back with another layer of those. And then I put one across the very top. So definitely keep that in mind. If you're gonna recreate this, you may want something a little more thick or you can just double up your coasters which is what I would have done if I had this to do over. I went ahead and added some black paint to touch up those screws. And then I took some twine and threaded it through the top of the Hot Wheel track and then took both ends of the twine and threaded it through one of the wooden beads, pushing it down to close it up on top. And then I added the wooden ring and trimmed off some of that twine so that I could thread it back through that wooden bead. And that way it is a nice secure fit. And then I just took one end of the twine, wrapped it around the rope that is there and tied it off and then trimmed it off. And I am so thrilled with this little piece. I think it is so cute. Now for this, you could use it in many different ways. You could make it a little bird feeder outside on a shepherd's hook. I decided to make it a plant hanger. So I added some foam from the Dollar Tree and then I'm using the fern that Jennifer sent me as challenge item number one. So here's a look at the entire thing all put together on the hook. And I did add a little more greenery. I just felt like it needed a little more volume. This is so lightweight. I think that this is a definitely high-end look for your wall decor. And everything's from the Dollar Tree. I'm so loving this. Thank you so much for sending me that little metal tray. I needed something like that to use in this idea. And I'm so glad that we were able to check the twist off of our list as well as challenge item number one in this beautiful hanging wall piece of decor what do you guys think what would you change do you like this and would you hang this on your wall comment down below and let me know your thoughts i also think it would be a great little shelf but time's a wasting so for this diy i need you to stay with me we're using a lot of items i'm learning a completely new skill while i have pneumonia but my husband's a wonderful teacher. So on to project number two. You guys, I have always wanted to make something using this lamp from the Dollar Tree, so we are doing that today. First, all of the sous chef items. We've got to prep everything. 
So I painted the wood piece and then I had a sun hat on hand from the Dollar Tree in black. I went ahead and unwound it. That is so satisfying and fun to do. But now we need to disassemble that lamp so my husband's gonna teach me. Be gently <clears throat> pulling the white wire away while you heat up the solder here just so it melts. Okay, so, so you're actually really just fast. burning through a wire. No, you're melting the solder. So, you, so you're so turning. You don't want to touch a, the it's wire. It's a very soft metal <gasps> that has a relatively low temperature at which it turns into a liquid. Oh. So you're just melting the solder. The solder is what's holding the the metal end of this wire to this metal tab right here. Okay. So you're just melt, turning that back into a liquid, and then it's really easy to pull the wire out. It's like melting glue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just melting hot glue. enough. So then where's, where, is that the solder there for the blue one? Mm-hmm. So you do the same thing right there. On the, but it's in a different place. Yep. It's just on the end. Okay. Looks like a little droplet of metal. It's called solder. Solder. Oh yeah, it's real soft. Mm-hmm. It's from Radio Shack. It's, yeah, it's been around. This world's been around a while. It's as old as me. Mm. Reformulated. All right, so do you want ready? to do it or do you want me to do yeah, it? Yeah, I'll try. Okay. So just use uh, one hand to kind of gently pull here. I'll just hold this steady. You don't pull. You don't have to pull it too hard because it'll pop right out as soon as that solder's melted. Cool. Here. I'm afraid I'm gonna burn you. But make sure. You oh. Don't, yeah. And you tip go. it. Be careful. Now this part is very hot too, isn't it? It touched the plastic button a little bit. So oh. just be careful of the angle. Oh boy. Okay. Just hold this steady for you. Yeah, just put it right on the solder there. It'll there you go. Yay. So it was a big learning experience and a lot more simple than I expected. So this step, I decided once I had it disconnected to sort of tape off the light bulb portion of the lamp and just a little bit of the wire base because I thought I wanted that part black and the rest of the lamp on the base black. So I spray painted those. While I was doing that and letting that dry, I went ahead and did more staining. I stained two coasters. I stained all of the wooden dowels. And when everything was dry, I brought it back inside and started fitting all the pieces together. So you'll notice my husband did help me out and drill some holes in the centers of these wooden coasters. That made threading the lamp top portion through it very easy. And we're using more of those wooden beads. I'm just putting them on to the stem a little bit at a time. Now some of them were stubborn, so I did use a stick on some of them just to loosen them up until I had the whole thing covered, and this is what it is looking like. Then I went ahead and added my batteries, and I figured out um, that you're not supposed to paint things because that is not good for the con conductivity of the solder to the wire. You live, you learn. So I decided to hot glue the two coasters together and stabilize those. Now it's time to solder everything and put it back together. Oh, this first. Well, it's the black part that got painted. Yeah. That's metal, right? Right. So just but put the soldering iron on that to heat it up. Just anywhere. Yeah. I was going to put it right where you put that wire. You don't have to put it right there. You can just get close to it. Oh, okay. So I'm just heating up the whole metal piece. Yeah, get, get a little closer. There you go. Ah, uh, okay. All right, there you go. Okay, now. Now? So, no, you got to keep it on there the oh. whole time. Okay. All right, so just hold it there. And then get that, get the solder. And don't touch the soldering iron, but touch the spot where we're going to melt it. Ooh, okay, so like there? No, you're going to melt it right where my wire is, right? Because you want the wire... See the little copper wire there? Yeah, so I'm putting this. What am I touching with this? Uh, the same spot, the whole metal tab. Okay. But you're, you're holding it there to heat up the whole area. Right. Now, now you're going to feed the solder into the spot where my wire is touching the tab. Place it. Yeah, just hold it. Just put it there. And 
If it's not melting, that means it's not hot enough yet. Just keep holding the soldering iron in place. <coughs> you, no. can't, you can't let the soldering iron off. I know, I'm sorry. Coughing. Okay. Just, uh, yeah, the wire, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, keep the soldering iron in contact as much as you can with the metal tab. This is hard. Yeah, just don't, just don't move it, just hold it. Uh, yeah, it should just go instantly as soon as it's hot enough. See, like, touch touch the solder to the tip of the solder area real quick so you can see this? how fast it melts, yeah. Oh, shy. So that's what's going to happen. We're trying to get this metal tab as hot as the soldering iron so that when you touch the wire, it just does it that. It just does that and makes it So blob. it's not wet or hot enough. No, no. <gasps> oh, she. You can get it here. You know, maybe I'll just put it closer. Should I wipe this tip? No, it's fine. Okay. I just feel Did it go? Not yet. Oh it is gone. Okay, keep keep it going. Keep, keep feeding it. it. Oh, I see. Okay, it yeah. like melts. Yeah, now take let's see, it should be good enough. So take the soldering iron away. Now it'll cool it. down. Okay. Now it's, now it's connected. See that? <gasps> you hold the soldering iron closer to the point we're trying to solder, it'll heat up better. Okay, I'm just concerned that it'll be. Oh, did it go? Oh, there it did. Do I need to feed it more? Is it done? Yeah. It's done? Looks like it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's attached. Oh my gosh, it's so instant. Yeah. I just am so used to hot glue and having to kind of... <coughs> no, this, stuff, truth. this stuff uh, cools down very fast. See, you can touch it. It's not super hot anymore. Yikes. It just, uh, once it cools down, it's solid. And thanks to Uncle Cuckoo, we have light. He has the patience of a saint. This is what we were using. It's as old as us and from Radio Shack, but you can buy them anywhere now. I'm so excited. This was such a crazy thing for me to do anytime to tackle this idea of wiring a lamp, but I did it with pneumonia. So if I can do it, you can do it. Now I'm going to walk you guys through how I did the shade on this lamp and then we will put everything together and I will show you the finished look. So I basically took the wooden dowels and I glued them in a clock order around the two coasters that I glued together. First I started off with the four points like a compass and then added in from there. That gave me my spacing, it's not exact but it worked. Now I'm taking the black hat that I disassembled and I am gluing it down, weaving it in and out of the dowels. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but on an offset basket style. So starting one before or one after the dowel that we did first. And this is gonna give us a really nice basket weave look. And then it's just a process of repeating it over and over again until you have completely created a lampshade. For me, it was a total of seven different layers of the hat material, and then mine was covered, and I decided to add some more of the wooden beads to the ends of the dowels. Some of them were tricky, so I did have to sort of use an extra dowel just for sort of loosening them up for a better dry fit, and then I went along and added a little bit of hot glue in the bottom of each of the beads to keep them in place. Now we're taking that piece we painted black. I added a picture tooth hanger to the back of it that I just had in my stash. 
And now I'm using command strips. These are for picture frames, but these hold up to, I think, 20 pounds. I cut it down to fit the base of the lamp. And now I'm just gonna use that Velcro strip to adhere it right on to the wooden base. And here is the finished product. We made a wall sconce from a Dollar Tree desktop lamp. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest. This is not an everyday DIY situation, but I am so excited about it. I love it. I think it's beautiful. My daughter thought it was amazing. If I had to do it over, there's a few things I would change. I would have not painted the head of the lamp. Remember I taped off the bulb section? Don't paint that part because it actually hinders the amount of light that it gives off. And I would have made it a lot lighter. I probably would have trimmed down those dowels and made the lampshade a bit shorter. It does kind of pull on the base of the lamp. And so that's what I would do to lighten it up. Now you guys know I wanna know if you would put that on your wall, but let's get on to project number three. For this one, we are using the cutting board that Jennifer sent me. Now this was something that evolved. I tried it a few different ways and I'm very grateful for this one because I think it turned out beautiful. I'm also using one of the tower tumbling block games that you can get at Dollar Tree. I've always wanted to use one of them and I've never really used one in any DIY. So here's my thought. I like the cutting board, it's adorable. You could go with something traditional for the kitchen or we could make something that is unexpected. And this was a no-brainer for me. I wanted to create the hidden shadow of a cross and I think it is something that is timeless and beautiful something you could have in your home any time of year, but especially with Easter coming up, I think this is a great project. Now, what I did was I just basically fit them into place. I played with placement, and it's just a whole lot of almost like playing the game Jenga to figure out where things fit. Once you get a pattern down, it is so easy, and you can make it as large or small as you want. Here is a look at the finished product. I am so blown away by this one. I think it is beautiful. I love the fact that the cutting board is your hanger. It has a hole right at the top, so you could hang this on the wall. I just think it is gorgeous. Now, if you wanted to, you could play it up with some different colors. You could give it a whole mosaic look. If I had to do it over again, there are a few things I would change. I would have spent some time sanding down the Jenga blocks so that they were all nice and smooth. And I probably would have measured my cross a little bit more precisely, as well as some of the blocks, which are just not the same size as the others. Of course, you could use anything in substitution for the little cutting board. You could add color to this, paint up different squares, and give it a whole mosaic look. I just can't believe how good this one turned out. I wanna know, would you hang this on your wall? Now let's get on to project number four. This one is so fast and so easy. For this, I picked up a frame from the Dollar Tree. It's a glassless piece of artwork. And then I went ahead and I removed the centerpiece so that I could measure this placemat that I almost gave to Goodwill. It's just kind of shrunk over the years and there's a couple little spots in one corner, but I held onto it and I'm gonna help you <laughs> grow your hoarding stash because I'm glad I held onto it. Now, I wanted to fray the edges once I had the right size, so I went ahead and used a comb to just kind of pull off the ends of the string, and then I did that to all the four sides. Two sides are gonna be one color, two sides are gonna be the other. I love the this frayed linen look that I've seen in a lot of artwork in different home stores. Now I'm just gonna use some hot glue to glue it down to the inside of the frame. This one is a really nice frame because it is sort of inset even though there is no glass. And I did just find it at my Dollar Tree. So keep your eye open if you're looking for something like that. Now we're using the wood rounds that Jennifer sent me. And I'm just gonna create a really simple modern art display by putting five down and then five across. It was really fun to just kind of look at the different wood pieces and put them in place. I think that this turned out beautiful. 
I think it looks like it cost a whole lot more than what it did. I'm so glad that I hung on to that placemat. I know that's not helping you clean out your craft room right now during spring cleaning, but I'm so glad I held on to it. And there is only one thing I would change about this. I would make more of them. I would make a grouping of them, maybe three or four different patterns. You could even use different things in the center. I love this look and I would definitely put it on my wall. But the question is, would you put that on your wall? So that's a wrap for this mystery box challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I got in my box and what I created. Be sure to follow the playlist. It'll be linked in the description and that way you'll get to see what everyone was sent, what they made with their items and who they sent their boxes to. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you back in the next video.